Hello and welcome to Transcending Crochet. Today I'll be teaching you how to make a super simple basket weave blanket. So today what you are going to need is a hook, some yarn, and a whole bunch of stitch markers. So for the yarn I used Karen Sprinkle Cakes in color purple velvet. This yarn was a gift from my Baba and I'm using an eight millimeter hook. So to start, you're going to make a slip knot with a reasonable amount so then you can weave in your ends after. And then what you are going to do is you're going to chain eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And if you haven't learned how to do a chain yet, I will leave a link above um, for you to watch. It's in my basics of crochet playlist on my channel. Six, seven, eight, perfect. And then this eight chain here counts as our side chain. So what you're going to do in this first stitch, you're going to make a half double crochet which is also in my basics of crochet playlist. So what you're going to do is you're going to yarn over, go through the first stitch, pull up loop, and go through all three. Going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull up loop, and go through all three. And you're going to yarn over, go into the next stitch, and you're going to continue making half double crochets all the way down this row until we get to the end. Okay, I just finished my last stitch and as you see it curves a little bit, that's okay. Don't worry about it, it flattens itself out once you add a couple rows and if you are worried about your count turn it so you're looking at it from bird's eye view and you got one two three four five six and seven perfect so moving on to our next row you're going to chain one this counts as our turning chain you're going to turn it so it looks like an, sort of like an l and what you're going to do is flip it so it's a backwards l as you see here and then you're going to make one half double crochet in each stitch. So you yarn over, go through the first stitch, and you're going to go through both loops. You're going to pull up a stitch, go through all three. Yarn over, go into the next stitch, pull through all three. And I will see you at the end of this row of half double crochets. I am at the end of row two and so there's some pretty simple math here that I've worked out for you so if you do seven stitches across you're going to need six rows of half double crochets you can do this in any weight yarn you want you can do it in weight four weight seven weight six weight five whatever you want so but I've worked out that seven stitches across equals six half double crochet rows equals a square and if you want to change up how thick thick or thin your squares are just measure what it is across and until how many rows you reach. And also with this project, you don't have to do half double crochets. You can add maybe a textured stitch like a pebble stitch or a moss stitch to add some texture to your project. So what you're going to do for the rest. So if you want, we're going to be making a whole bunch of strips. And so what you want to do is do the math. So if you're going to have one square, that's six. If you want two squares across, that's 12. So multiply how many squares you want across your project by six, and that is how many. So for this one, I did 10 rows, so that's 60 rows per strip. And I made it a square, so that's 10 by 10 strips. And it's pretty simple once you continue working on this project, because all you do is you keep half double crocheting to the very end. So, and if you want to count your rows, 
Sorry, it's a little hard to work through the camera. I'm still learning that. And if you want to count your rows, they're pretty simple to count. Here's one row. You see these little bean stitches. Here's two. There's, And then here's three. So what I'm going to do and where, where I will meet you is once I have finished my 60 rows. And I will show you what you do from there. Okay, I just finished row 60. And what we are going to do now is where you're going to trim the last and finish this strip off. So what you're going to do is you're going to turn and see how I hold my yarn, how it comes across. I find if I trim just before or a little bit after my fourth finger, it gives me just the right amount of yarn to work with for my weaving end of my ends. And then what we are going to do is we are going to make a chain, but instead of chaining another one, we are just going to pull straight through and pull it tight to form a little knot to finish it off. And here is one complete strip for this project. And you're going to need 20 of these total if you want to make a 10 by 10 of these blanket. And here is what 20 strips looks like. Here is my 20 strips. As you can tell, it is a lot. And I'm going to show you what you do with all of these after you finish weaving in your ends. Okay, so I'm just going to weave in my ends and I just want to show you quickly how I weave in. So I got my yarn needle and I threaded my yarn through it and I'm looking at it. So then since we are going to be working our border along these stitches, I'm going to work more in this row. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull it through this stitch here first. And I'm just going to pull it through. And then what I do is I normally go a front pass where I go through all of these one way. And then I come back, skipping over the f one of those stitches and coming back so then it doesn't pull through. So what I'm going to do is split this one in two and then pull it through those two and then these two. And then I normally just trim it from there. And that is how you weave in your ends for this project. Have fun. Okay, I've got all 20 of my strips woven in for the ends and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to push these off to the side and I'm going to start pulling out since I'm doing 10 by 10. This will be 10 strips across and I'm going to lay them out nicely like so. Like this. And I'm just going to move the back of the table here. And so once you have these all nicely laid out, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six so far. There's seven, eight, and I'm just realizing I've got a bunch of colors together. I'm gonna to mix this one up with this one. There's nine, and then one more should do the trick here with 10. And then what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start weaving them together. So what I'm going to start is I'm going to start with on top on this side and I'm going to lift this one up. And then every second one, you're going to lift up and you're going to try and make sure these are leveled before. And then you're going to place this strip on top so it sort of lines up with the corner here. And then you're going to fold these back over like so and then i'm going to grab my stitch markers and they're going to be like my pins in this so to speak here are my stitch markers what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a couple out because we're going to starting on this end we're going to pin this edge together and then we're going to pin this edge with our stitch markers all the way together like so, and you can count. So if you're wondering, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, and then this should be also six across underneath. Okay, I will see you after we finish putting our stitch markers in. And before I speed this up, I have our question of this project, and it's what do you do while you're crocheting? Because for me, while I crochet, I like watching either like 
a movie or a TV show or I listen to music. So what do you guys like doing while you crochet? Please leave it in the comments below or you can add it to the Instagram account, which is called Transcending Crochet. placed one on the sides as well and then we are going to start taking the rest of our strips and weaving them across so I'm going to take my next one and see how this one going I'm going to call this lengthwise and widthwise this one going lengthwise the one going widthwise is going to go under the second one over the first one here and we're going to work our way back across so it's sort of woven in Okay, and after we finish that row, we can sort of wiggle these so then it gets tighter. And this is where our basket weave comes in because we are weaving our project together. That's what makes this one so fast and simple. It is instead of doing a bunch of front and back post double crochets that takes eons, all we do is we make half double crochet strips and then we join them together with our border. And I will show you how we do our border after we finish weaving them together. And as you see, as I'm going, we are going to join these rows and pin them in place with our stitch markers, like so. And then this basically stops it from moving while you're working on your border as well. And what you're going to do with your, this is my third row. You're going to, so the ones that were over top widthwise, the lengthwise is going to be over top. And you're going to repeat this for however many strips you have. Say you want a rectangle, then you would make however long you want it to be, and then you would count how many rows you want to have it, and multiply that by six. And I will see you at the end when we have these all woven together. So I have finished weaving in all my ends together and now I'm going to zoom in on this edge here and I will show you how to do your border. And I'm going to do this border a lot like how we do a quilt border where you work on one side only and then you work on the opposite side and then you work on either side after that. Okay, so for the border I'm using this. It's called Charisma from loops and threads and then I'm using this random yarn that I found that must have been a remainder from another project to make weight six because this is weight five and this is weight four so I'm just going to set them off to the left so that I'm right handed so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with a slip knot so I'm going to leave in a bit of an end to weave in after for this border and I've done the math and if I've got ten strips across and each is seven stitches wide per strip, then it should equal around 70 stitches per side for these sides. So I'm gonna start at the corner here. And so here's a corner stitch for my half double crochet. Here's another stitch I will show you. So here we go, we're gonna start with that one. And then we're gonna pull through those and slip knot. And then we're going to chain one well, not slip, not sti slip stitch. <laughs> Sorry for that. And then we're going to go back into the same stitch and we are going to pull up a loop. And then, so you got two loops on your hook and we're going to pull through two and that is considered a single crochet. So going into the next stitch is this one here. And then the one in the back, as you see, this is a row here. So that means this stitch here would be, or these two stitches here would be our next place to single crochet. And this will be a tad bit tricky as we are working the border. 
but that's that's okay it will get easier after we single crochet in each stitch across so i'm going to do one more with you and then it would be as you see there's a row here so it would be this stitch here and we're going to pull through both of those and as you see it joins them together nicely and then we go into our next stitch like so and we're going to pull through like that I will meet you at the end of this single crochet row. So you should have around 70 crochets going all the way to the other side of the blanket. Sorry, it's not all in the camera. It's a big blanket here. And I will meet you at the end of this single crochet row. So I've dropped down my camera and I've zoomed in to show you closely if you're still just a smidge confused. So it's sort of hard to tell where it is, but so as you see here would be a row. So here would be your end stitch. And then if you look at the top, you can see there's your stitch that you made at the end of one of your strips. And what you're going to do is you're going to single crochet. So you're going to yarn over, pull through both of those, and then you're going to pull through those two loops. And as you see, here would be another row. So as you see, this stitch, and sometimes you have to turn and use your pointy end of your hook to catch those loops there. And then if you look behind, this is your stitch that you go into. And then you would single crochet and that's what it looks like. It, mine might be a little tighter because I've modified my yarn by combining two together. But I will meet you at the end of this row where we should have roughly 70 single crochets. Okay, and this is my last stitch. This is my corner stitch here. So there's my last single crochet into the corner. And I've got 70 stitches all the way across because I count four, six, seven. Yep, so that's 70 stitches across. And then what we are going to do now is we're going to chain one and we are going to turn. So this is our tiny little side corner stitch and this so we're going to turn it so this, this way, is going that way now. So let me just move my yarn off my project. And we are going to flip it rather gracefully. And if you have stitch markers, this will help because then this will stay in one piece as you turn it. Like so. Okay, so we have flipped our work. So now we are working in from this end to that end now. So we chained one and we are going to single crochet in each stitch all the way down again. So I'm gonna do the first five stitches with you. So you go through, pull up loop, you got two on your hook, you go through both. And if you are confused on how to do single crochet, it is in my playlist, The Basics of Crochet, which is under my channel. Okay, so you are working your single crochets, which will look like this, all the way down to the other side. Okay, I am at the end of my border. I'm just finishing off the last couple stitches here. And I've done five rows for my border. And so once I reach the end, last two stitches last stitch so what i'm going to do after my five rows as you can see it's a decent sized border is i'm going to turn my hand and around my fourth finger that's normally the length i like to go for i'm going to make a chain but instead of doing another chain i'm going to pull both strands straight through like so and pull it tight Okay, so now I'm going to move my yarn off my project and I'm going to flip it. So if I move my camera over, I'm going to flip it. So then we work on the opposite edge. So if the edge you worked on last time was the bottom edge, you're going to work on your top edge and you're going to do the same amount of rows and the same amount of stitches across. So for me, I would do 70 stitches across for five rows. And I will meet you back after you finished your top border row 
and I'll teach you how to do the left and right sides. Okay, I've finished my two edges. I've got five rows, each of 70 stitches on both sides of my project. And now we will be focusing on the left and right sides and I've, so then we can get started on it. And it's super simple and it's going to be the same way we did the top and bottom borders. Okay, so to start on our left and right sides, we are going to insert our hook, put on our slip knot that we made onto our hook pull it through that first stitch and chain one. After we chain one in that same stitch, we are going to single crochet one stitch like so. And then in our next stitch, which is really sort of hidden, but right here, there's one, so there's two, and this one's big, so I'm gonna put two stitches to even it out. And then last one in this really tight stitch here, which I'm using the point of my hook to get into. And so there's four stitches and as you see, one, two, three, four, they're nice and even. And then what you're going to do is you're going to do the same four on the other edge of the blanket. And so you're going to add eight to the 70 that you'll single crochet across. And I will start, it's the same as the top, and bottom borders of the project. So I'm going to do the first one with you. As you see, it's already joined. So you're going to go into this corner stitch here and then into this one right here, you're going to single crochet. And you're going to do this all the way down and I will meet you at the end of this border which you can do it thicker or thinner depends on what you like if you want the sides to be a little wider to make it a little more rectangular you could do that or you could do the same five rows to make it more square up to you and i will meet you at the end of the border rows for the left and right sides to tell you what to do next okay i have finished my border i've woven in my ends Thank you for watching and I hope you like, subscribe and share. I would love to see your projects. Please send them to me on my Insta channel called Transcending Crochet. Hope you have a wonderful day and hope you enjoy crocheting this project.